If you don't empower people, you're not going to build high trust. And, you, and usually what that means is you have to do it slowly. You give people a little bit of responsibility. You measure that, you talk about it, and you give them more responsibility. But I think the idea is you want to empower the organization as far out as you can, as deep into the organization as you can. I'm on a board with uh, Stanley McChrystal, who was the four-star general in charge of special forces. And uh, he said that he would empower the soldiers at, until it hurt, as far down into the organization as he could until it hurt. And I think that's really the way to think about it is, you know, figure out how to give people as much authority and power as you can. And then how do you, uh, it, it, that leads into the next next topic of, of measuring, that the, the, the fourth law is that measuring what you achieve. How do you empower and then measure back on that? Yeah, some people feel that they're in, uh, in conflict. You know, if you're empowering somebody, are, are you not trusting them if you're going out and measuring? Well, my view is if you aren't measuring, you really aren't fully empowering them. People who don't know what is being measured do not feel empowered. They do not feel trusted. So if you give somebody an assignment and you don't let them know what are the metrics, what are the measures, then they've not really fully been empowered. So I think high trust organizations tend to be very clear about what's, what they're being accounted for, for what's being accounted now, for. Now, at, at the time a person's being empowered and uh, accountability or metrics, do you find from a management style that it's often better to let the person being in power come up with the accountability or the, the measurable, or do you, do you tell them, this is what I need you to do? I think it's always best if you can sort of joint venture these things, coming to agreement on what are the measures. But I think you have to have a clear view. I think the leader's job is to figure out what success is. You're trying to figure out which peak are we climbing? How will we know when we've won? So the job is to figure out what is winning. And then I think you can work with people in the organization, say, what's the best route? to the summit. How do we best do this? Because you'll find that people know in the organization, down in the organization, they know more than you do as the leader. So you want to joint venture those metrics with them, but you have to have a pretty clear idea of what summit you're climbing. Okay, so now I get the, the tough question here. Oftentimes, you know, in the management meeting, questions get asked. You say, this is the measurable, it, 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 you know, metric that I want you to come back with. Well, what happens when a person falls short? You know, is there, do you, do, you, do you outline repercussions up front or is it like you go back to the drawing board and say, what, what went wrong here and how do we get back on track? Well, I think one of the things you realize is failure uh, is a preamble to success. And if you have that notion uh, that really you don't have to succeed at everything, we sit down and we talk about it. Anytime that things don't go well, we sit down and talk about it. We alter course. We figure out if we're measuring the right things and we move forward. If you fail because of lack of effort, that's actually a much more serious problem than a lack of results. And if you feel, uh, if you fail out of, uh, of, of a character flaw, you actually have violated a principle of integrity, then that's probably uh, a failure where you, you end up no longer trusting.